Hey pilots, Drain Man here and today I have a very special video. Today we are going to check out this brand new Hobbywing Micro Combo 60 Amp 4-in-1 with the brand new F4 G3 flight controller. And what makes this so very special is this review is kind of like a 2-in-1 or maybe even a 3-in-1. And the reason why is that you can purchase this stack or you can purchase just the ESE or you can purchase just the flight controller. So if you're looking for any one of those three, this is the video for you. So let's go ahead and crack this puppy open. I'm excited to see what it comes with. Alright, so you got a nice display. Your stack does not come together for you with some stacks when you purchase them. They're already all together for you. So we've got the flight controller here. We'll take a look at that in a minute. We've got our ESC right here. Look at that. We will take a look at that in a minute. That is absolutely gorgeous. Let's go ahead and pull this off and see what comes with it. Okay, so we've got our mounting hardware that gives us four screws spacers and nylon lock nuts and when i say nylon lock nuts it's not a nylon nut it is a metal lock nut with nylon in the tip for locking down so these are good they won't back out on you with a couple cratches and some vibration so you've got tons of connectors here We've got two stickers if you decide you want to stick one for your flight controller and one for your ESC. We've also got a very nice power lead. I do like when they have this gray cap rather than the heat shrink. Alright, so right away I'm noticing that this thing looks absolutely different. I mean you still have your same color scheme going on but the board is shaped differently. It's definitely a bigger board although you're still 30 by 30 mounting. You can see the glue on your connectors. Another thing too is the capacitor. They've taken the time to heat shrink the metal and then they went ahead and installed it for us. And then they even tacked it on. So that right there is pretty sweet. The only downside to this is if you have a different mounting solution for your capacitor, you are going to have to desolder this or cut it and then just solder over. This ESC right here is a 60 amp 4-in-1 ESC. The last stack by Hobbywing popular one was a 45 amp and it was a very very nice ESC. It was even walking around with the title of best ESC. I can only imagine what this thing is going to do on the chart. This thing is probably going to carry on the name that it's been holding and, and continue to hold the belt. You can see they did conformal coating on the bottom and now that we've got it upside down you can kind of get more of an effect as to it's not really square. It's got more of like an octagon going, you know. This is a 35 volt 560 microfarad. It wouldn't hurt to add another one. You definitely can't go wrong with that. I can see right away looking at this, the FETs are way bigger. You've got a nice row of capacitors right here. You've got your shunt resistor. Now, one of the very big upgrades is, and I'm going to venture to say that quite a few guys probably ripped these connectors off and it left them pretty screwed. So you can choose to go ahead and run it and then if something goes south, you can use these right here. It is soft mounted, which is very good. I don't know an ESC these days that doesn't come soft mounted. All right, let's go ahead and go over our pinout for the ESC. Okay, so first up, as you already know, we've got LiPo connection. And that's going to be your ground wire and your positive wire right here. And you can see the markings. They're giving you an arrow for direction. And what that's telling you is that this is motor one, two, three, and four. So be sure to put it in your board like that. If for any reason that's not going to work for you and you do have to mount it like this or like this or any other way but what I just said, then you're going to have to remap your motors. And that's really not a big deal. I do have a video on it. I'll throw it down in the video description. All right, so right here you've got your very first pad. It just means not connected. After that, you'll have your ground. After your ground, you'll have your battery. After your battery, you have your CRT, which is your current. 
It's your current sensing. After that, you've got your ground and your 5 volt. Now this 5 volt right here is what's going to power your flight controller. Believe it or not, there's a lot of ESCs out there that people are buying that don't have a 5 volt regulator on board. And then you get these flight controllers that can't handle anything but 5 volts. And then what? And then this is going to finish off with your motors and it's going to go from left to right. You know, motor 1, 2, 3, and 4. This is a 32-bit ESE, which means it will use the firmware of BL Heli 32. And this does run D-Shot 1200. If for any reason you're going to run it on a different protocol, you would assign that inside of the flight controller. And this ESC is designed to pick up on that all by itself. So as soon as you power it up, it'll automatically detect that and it'll take care of the rest. Alright, so just to say it, you're running a 60 amp ESC. You already knew that. You have a peak current of 80 amps. Alright, here we are. This is the hobby wing f4 g3 flight controller here it is in your face if you were unsure as to whether this board is different than the g2 let me tell you now this board is different than the g2 i actually think i have a g2 laying around here somewhere ah there it is so there you go you've got it we're going to do a side by side those are pretty dang similar. That's another thing about this board is that this one here is running a 10 volt regulator, which is super awesome, don't get me wrong. But this board here, the G3, is running a 12 volt regulator, and that guy is right here. And it's very nice to have that. And how could you ever go without it once you've had it, you know? I'm not sure if you can see the differences, but another thing they did, which I think they learned from the last one, is they went ahead and gave you this connector plug which is great they gave it to you again but they've also given you a set of broken out pads that you can use if something goes wrong with this so that's pretty cool all right so let's go ahead and do a quick pin out on this board for our pin out you've got your connector up here and this is the connector that's going to go to your esc so if you want to just go plug for plug that's great it looks like we have these connectors and the only thing they really color coded for us was the ground and the positive and you know it is what it is I guess we'll get by without it green yellow blue especially for the video don't you think we should have a yellow wire for the video here we are running ground you've got your V back you've got your current which needs to be connected to the current on your ESC and it is not ESC telemetry it is just your current sensor you've also got a ground a 5 volt and then you've got motors 1 through 4 again okay so that's motors 1 through 4 and if you weren't sure and you needed to know they are going motor 1 2 3 and 4 then right here on the right side you've got and that's going to correlate to this pad You've got your VBAT, your VTX switch, which is going to be labeled as VTX SW down here. And what that is, is that's your VTX switch that we were just talking about, which is right here with bridging pads. And it does come pre-bridged with a zero ohm resistor from the factory. And what that's doing is that's telling you to just go ahead and use the 12 volt regulator as your switch. And it's going to correlate with the VTX switch pad then you've got your video in you've got your video out you've got your 12 volts your ground and then you've got your UART 6 which is RX and TX and that is going to be for this connector I'm pretty certain that these pads are breaking out this connector as in they are just connected one for another. Now if we jump down and down here if you're familiar with the F4G2 at all then you're going to know right away that all of these pads are exactly the same. The only thing different here is this pad right here. It is no longer a 10 volt pad, it is now a 12 volt pad, which is super, super awesome. But let's go ahead and run through it real quick. We've got double ground, we've got a 3.3 if you're a spectrum, we've got a 5 volt, we've got UART 3 here, we've got SBUS and RSSI, you've got you are one and then you've got two grounds, two five volts, your 12 volt, your LED, and your buzzer. All right, right here is your arrow and this is the ICM 2062, 
which is 2062. And that that gyro right there is definitely a more sensitive gyro. Anybody who's tested it can tell you that. You've also got an SD card expansion if you need it. It's there. They put a sticker on. I'm not going to remove this. You can if you want. But I don't know. If this breaks on me three weeks down the road, which I doubt, and I reach out to them and they say, hey, give me the numbers off that sticker. All right, diving back into the front. This is a soft-mounted flight controller. And your boot button. You do have a boot button, but you also got some tiny pads here. If you don't want to be messing with that and you just want to throw a bead of solder and get to programming and updating and getting all your good fun stuff out of the way all right guys i am excited to throw this into beta flight i want to find out what firmware is it coming with i mean it is a brand new board it better have something pretty new on it we can go over flashing it real quick although i do have a video on that i'll put it down in the video description and then i want to show you guys how to set up this vtx switch and then what we'll do is in a later video i will put it on a build show you how to build it and then i'm going to go ahead and fly it for you and i'll let you guys decide how good it is let's go ahead and dive into beta flight okay pilots so we are in beta flight now I have got it up on COM3. I did not have any difficulties connecting. If you don't have Betaflight, you will need to download it. You can find it online and then download the drivers that you will need to get it running. Also, if for any reason you plug in your flight controller and you're having a hard time connect, you will need to download Zadig, which is right here, and you can use that to fix your drivers. Other than that, let's go ahead and dive in. Whoa, okay, right off the bat, I am noticing a hexacopter. I don't think I've ever had this happen. Uh, it is on Betaflight 3.5.6, which is a little old, so I'm a little surprised right there. I don't know why. I'm going to go ahead and have to just say that it's probably the microcontroller, which has not been updated, but the board itself is a new board, but probably the microcontrollers are you know, from the shelf. I want to go ahead and get that off right away. That's going to drive me nuts. I would imagine if you are a new pilot, that's something that might mess you up if you've never seen it before and you don't know how to get rid of it. You can see how sensitive the gyro is. I mean, this thing's moving around and nobody's even touching it. I mean, it is sitting there not moving and it's still got some movement to it. All right, so the whole purpose of jumping into beta flight is not to give you a whole tutorial. I just want to show you how to set that up. Please, flash newer firmware. I mean, you don't have to, but I'm going to go ahead and recommend it. If you already know how to set it up, then you're good to go. I appreciate you tuning in for the review, and I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. For the guys that want to set up the VTX switch, let's go. Very first thing I want you to do is get into beta flight and head down to your CLI. If you are going to update your firmware, please do it before this because after you flash it would erase everything that you have done to your board thus far. So let's go ahead and type in resource. Once you've pulled up resource, what we need out of here is we are going to need RX3. And the only reason why I say RX3 is because I'm just using it as an example, okay? If you soldered for your VTX switch on a different UART, then be sure to use that one. If you used one, then you're going to do exactly what we're doing, except you will focus on UART 1. And the same goes for 6. I don't know what you'll use. So the first thing you will do is type resource serial underscore RX three and then you will type none and as you can see right there it has freed this uart from that pad so now we are able to move it and put it somewhere else all right so the next thing you need to do is you need to set up a custom mode switch and we are just going to use user one so go ahead and type this up exactly how i have it and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put this down in the video description. So if it confuses you at all, don't worry. Just go down there, copy, and paste it here. So we need to set pin IO.
40, 41, 42, 43. Hit enter. And then we need to aux to 40 to 1600, 2100, 0. All right, so if you are getting back anything other than what I just got, so if it says invalid or type help or anything like that, then you need to you need to redo it and you need to do it how I have it here. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to assign the resource ID to the custom mode switch, which we're going to use user one, but we want to go ahead and do that. So we are going to use what we used above. So you saw that we pulled serial RX three off of B11. So if you haven't deleted it, you can still look up. So whatever yours was, you will use down here now. So mine was B11. So I'm going to type resource pin IO one and mine is going to be B11. If yours was C07, then you would have typed C07 here. After you've done that, hit enter. It'll let you know that you've set it to the right spot. And as long as everything looks good, make sure you type save and hit enter. It'll reboot. All right, so now we need to head over to modes. And what we're going to do is we are going to shoot down to user one. There she is right there. It's almost like she knew we were coming for. And what you're going to do is you're going to set up an aux switch. And then, for example, let's say you use auxiliary one. You will flip that switch and set this none other than any other switch that you've set. So if you set an arm switch for your quad to be able to take off and fly, you're going to set that exactly the same here. And after you've done that, click save. After you've saved, I want you to pull your flight controller and your entire build, pull it out of beta flight, and give it a test. Make sure it's working. I just love it. I absolutely love this stack. I, I can't wait to fly it. I am definitely going to show you guys how I set it up, how I put it in the build, which build I put it in, and then I'm going to take you guys for a test spin in it. So I'm super excited. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you on the next one.